Live from the Business Radio X studio in Atlanta, it's time for Dental Business Radio. Brought to you by Practice Quotient. Practice Quotient bridges the gap between the provider and payer communities. Now here's your host, Patrick O'Rourke. Hi there, friends of Dental Business Radio. This is your host, Patrick O'Rourke, on a sunny day with my friend Amal. Amal, new crew car. You got it? Almost. Well, we'll try again later. Yes, sir. So, Amal, my friend that I met originally down in Tampa on Harbor Island one day for lunch, who is a a generous and smart individual, uh, a numbers guy with a CPA background. He's also an author uh, and the founder of Patient Prism. Patient Prism holds many different patents that we may or may not get into. I don't know. But when somebody asks you on an elevator... And they say, what is patient prism? What do you tell them? If, if it was a short elevator ride, then I'll tell them, we, we taught a machine how to understand the nuance of dental conversations so that we could understand what prevents a new patient from moving forward to schedule an appointment on the phone. And we help dental practices basically improve their sales, sales ability to convert more of those leads into scheduled appointments. Mm-hmm. That's a short elevator ride, depending what floor I'm coming from. Uh, All right. So now we're stuck on an elevator, our metaphorical elevator. And I go, that is interesting. Tell me a little bit more. Yeah. I mean, what's happened in dentistry is this, right? Over the last 10 to 15 years, dentistry has shifted from how dentists acquired new patients. In the past, in the 70s and 80s, even early 90s, patients used to show up because from some referral source. There's not a lot of advertising and marketing going on. Mm -hmm. And and, and Clear Choice Dental Implant Centers came about in the the late, early 2000s, and they really changed the game where now we were starting to advertise actively. It became a B2C model where you're actually actively advertising to get new patients. Now, when you're actively advertising to get new patients, one of the fundamental things that needs to happen, you get the phone to ring. You have to make sure that, Every time a phone rings, number one, you answer it. Super important. Mm. You're open for business. Number two. Answering phone. Answering. answering is the, important. Answering the okay, phone. Okay, hold on. Important. I'm writing this down. That's right. Answer the damn phone. Number two, uh, you've spent money driving that lead in. You're spending Google, Facebook, whatever, whatnot. Mm-hmm. You want to make sure that lead, that new patient, that prospect, we call it prospect, right? They're not a customer yet. They're a prospect. Sure. And they're thinking hot, about it. And, 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 and they're a pretty hot lead because they've called you. Mm-hmm. They're not a warm lead or a cold lead, they're a hot lead because they're called you. You want to make sure that patient feels comfortable booking that appointment on that first attempt. What was happening across dentistry since the 70s is that that booking rate was around 60, 65%. So we were missing so much, so much of the opportunities right there on the phone because what happened in dentistry was we're still in the elevator, we're probably on the 15th floor. And what happened in dentistry was that we hired people to work in dentistry, especially at the front office who were answering phones, uh, to be order takers. And we didn't t- tell them to be salespeople. And sales somehow is considered a wrong, is a bad word, but it's not, right? As long as you're moving people from, from a bad spot to a good spot. In most instances in dentistry, what we're doing in dentistry is we're taking patients with, with bad health suboptimal health and moving them good health. So we have to really train our, our people to be salespeople at the front. And that is why Patient Prism was developed, is to enable better sales conversations between prospects that are coming from marketing, coming from all these different sources, and getting them scheduled by leveraging AI. AI is, you know, it's a, it's a buzzword these days. Artificial okay. intelligence, intelligence is what that stands for, it right? Is. And, and so we use this subset of uh, our AI called natural language processing where we took spoken words, we analyzed them really quickly. And if the patient decided not to move forward in that journey on that phone call to schedule an appointment with you, we analyzed that conversation really quickly and notified the office within 20 minutes now, 20, 25 minutes, saying that, hey, this is what went wrong. You didn't have to actually listen to the whole conversation. This is what went wrong. You didn't offer them financing or you didn't discuss the insurance options properly or you, you diagnosed the, 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 what the patient needed when you couldn't have diagnosed it in the first place. 
And so here's, here's the information 20 minutes after a patient decides to hang up with you. And now you have that second chance to make that first impression. You, you call the patient back and saying, sir, you called us earlier. You need a dental implant. You know what? I, I understand you had no insurance, uh, and you, you had to figure out, and we forgot to give you some important information about financing options we have available. So come on back in. We'll, we'll get you in our schedule. We have an appointment available for 930 tomorrow and uh, we'll get you a free exam and x-rays. Come on in. We love new patients. Our doctor is one of the best in the country. He's placed over 5,000 implants. Now you've, you've, you've turned the conversation around. You've given that, you've given that patient the ability to come back in your office. And what we've seen with patient prism is 25% of those patients actually come back on the second try. So, so patient prism basically leverages AI to understand the problem that occurred on the phone that prevented the patient from moving forward. Once you understand the problem, we communicate that problem within 20 minutes to the dental office. So they can actually have that second chance of getting that patient back. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, you know, it's one or two patients extra per month could make or break uh, your office or or it could make your office. Right. I mean, you know, right. After a certain point, you can, you can make a big impact. So, and it's about the right kind of patients too. The, you know, anybody who's a student of sales, yep. uh, which I think, um, you know, I've, I would consider myself to be a student, um, sales, follow up and sales is key. So you, know, you have to follow up, follow up, follow up. One of the things that, you know, frankly, like my organization, we don't even have any salespeople, so we don't do any follow up and we probably miss out on a lot of stuff. Um, and, but we're, we're a little bit different type of business. We're referral based. It's 100% referral based. So that's, you're only calling us if somebody said, some nice things, right? right. Um, and when you, you state, hey, this is sales and prospects, I get that. But to me, what you just described is an education process. And it's a training process of helping the front lines or the face of these dental practices be more welcoming, use active listening techniques, and clearing the pathway of making people comfortable and educating them, assuming that they are the best solution, they have the best solution, kind of like the implants we just described for that, that specific patient. Correct. Right. Versus being, a, uh, yeah, we, yeah, we don't take blue cross. Right. Uh, and so, and then, then you're doing it and I'm going to try to get into the numbers cause I was kind of doing them in my head, um, in a way that's quantifiable. Um, and the dentist owners are not having to listen to phone calls or train people. Um, it's all done. It's proven. And so if let's say that 65% of our patients are, or we're converting on a 65% ratio, that means we're not converting on 35%. And so you are then able to get one quarter of that 35% back. I think that that's really important to track because you know, in my conversations, it's still to this day. It seems to me that what's tracked is how many new patients am I getting a month? Correct. Does that make sense? And, you know, um, it's easy to say, right, I need to spend more money on marketing to drive new patients. But sometimes it's, okay, well, let's understand we might be getting enough leads in our offices. We just need to convert them. Right. Right. So why spend more money? It's the easy button the easy button to press is let's spend more money on marketing. Mm-hmm. Well, I can tell you that, you know, outside of the larger groups, um, spending money on marketing is not something that's high on the priority list of most dental practices and, you know, specialty practices. Let's include in that category. Um, you know, sometimes you talk to folks and they're, you're like, well, how much money do you spend on marketing? And they're like marketing, man, did some mailers like back in 1994 <laughs> didn't work. <laughs> you know, one of the things that as, as, as professional, uh, management comes into dental practices and private equity comes into D- DSOs, one of the things, and they're super analytical, right? One of the things mm-hmm. we talk about in, in, in our business as well as any business should talk about is what does it cost to acquire a customer? It's the cost of, you know, it's called the CAC, right? Cl- cl- client acquisition yeah. cost. So client right. acquisition cost, right? So customer acquisition cost, whatever that is. Um, and, and we have to really understand that concept really well. Uh, if you want to run dentist, 
den- the practice of dentistry as a business, as we're in business radio right now, mm-hmm. we want to understand what it does it cost to acquire a customer. Now you're spending, let's say, two thousand dollars in a Google AdWords campaign, let's say to attract Invisalign patients, mm-hmm. and they, you want to do Invisalign, and let's say uh, from that Google AdWords, ten people actually call us. Mm-hmm. Right? Now, if ten people call us and we only schedule five, right, that's four hundred dollars cost of acquisition, mm-hmm. right? But if we schedule all ten, that's only two hundred dollars cost of acquisition, mm-hmm. and and that's where what. Patient prism really helps you understand and, and and compress that that cost, right? Because if your two thousand dollars can get you, you know, a five patients worth four thousand a piece, that's twenty thousand. Mm-hmm. Or we can get you eight patients, that's 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 thirty two thousand. Mm-hmm. Um, that's what we see the lift happen, right? Because we're already spending the money to drive the leads in. We're spending money upwards of hundred dollars a lead sometimes. A couple sometimes sure. it's two hundred dollars a lead. Google is expensive. AdWords are expensive to drive those type of high value customers into your office. Mm-hmm. And, and and somehow our receptionist says, by the way, we have nothing available for the next three weeks and the patient goes away. Or the, the receptionist says, you know, um, it's really going to cost you $5,000, but you might need a root canal before that. It's going to cost you six grand. And we're driving people away from mm-hmm. our offices to come in. Mm-hmm. Because at the end of the day, uh, Patrick, you've been in dentistry for a very long time. You know, and and we don't. We're not dentists. Both of us are not. But one thing we know for sure: nobody knows what you need inside your mouth unless you open your mouth and a dentist looks at it with their loops or whatever it is and examines the teeth. Sure, right? you can't really diagnose that over the phone and and tell the patient, "Oh, you might need this. That's going to cost you a thousand." Mm-hmm. There's two barriers, main barriers. Does that happen a lot? It happens a lot. It happens a lot. Uh, people start talking about, "Hey, what's it going to cost me?" Oh, well. The the crown's twelve hundred, but the build up's going to be another three hundred, and then um, we don't know whether you might need a root canal. That can be another thousand. So the patients here looking at some special, thinking that you know it's maybe about a thousand dollars, and the insurance is going to cover whatever percentages is. And now they have this idea that oh my god, I have to spend another fifteen hundred dollars on this. Mm-hmm. When you have no idea, do you? How do you know the patient might need a build up or a root canal? Right. But 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 somehow. Our, our folks, if they're not, they create all these barriers, barriers for patients to make an appointment. Right. And they think they're trying to be helpful, probably. Right. So it's sort of like, uh, like you just said, right. We're, we're business folks. I've been in, you know, I'm from the insurance business, but I know more about, you know, I started in dental and Lord knows this is where I'm still making my hay. Right. Uh, so I know more about it than I, and I care to brag about. I know what an apicoectomy is and I know how to spell it, but can I do it? Right okay. now, sometimes people because people know that I do something in dentistry, right? But they don't know exactly what. So and then they're like, "Hey, Pat, well, blah blah blah." I'm like, "Look, I'm not a dentist. I, I don't know what's going on. Don't point, you know, open your mouth over your dragon breath." Um, and even though I probably do know more than you know most folks, right? Well, I would never try to get out of my swim lane that much to diagnose and. It's the same thing for the front desk. They know a lot about it, but you're still not licensed to diagnose, right? And, and it's not physically possible to diagnose unless somebody's opened their mouth and you've looked inside. Because mm-hmm. somebody thinks they need a they need a a crown. How do you know they need a crown? Right? Mm-hmm. How, and then you're quoting prices on that. Sure. And then you're not even then on top of that. So there's two barriers that patients face when they. When they call a dental office, and nobody nobody likes to call a dental office. We know that, right? There's there's forty percent of people actually only go to a dentist. Sixty percent of America doesn't even go to a dentist. I like so, going to the dentist. So somebody who calls a dentist, they have it, it, they have overcome significant inertia to actually call the dental office, and they have called us. Now they have two concerns: how much is going to hurt me physically, because there's fear of dentistry, right? How much pain and all that stuff, and how much is it going to cost me? Mm-hmm. So fear and cost are two big barriers. And, and, and then the third thing barrier also is that have I called the right place? Is, are these the good people? Are they competent? And all we've got to do in, 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 on the phone is, is make them feel safe, make them feel that they've called the right place, make them feel that this is going to be an affordable treatment for them and make them feel that it's going to improve their life. And, and if we can communicate that, we don't need to communicate a lot more. We have to actively listen, empathy. Those are a couple of things we do at Patient Prism. We analyze things like active listening. Did you ask about discomfort? 
Did you mention financing? Did you discuss insurance options correctly? What if somebody was out of network? Well, look at that. Well, how do you have the conversations around that? So have you ever seen the study? There's a multiple of them, actually, that said the number one reason why people don't go to the dentist is because they don't have dental insurance. Number two reason is because they don't know how much it's going to cost, whether they have dental insurance or not, because dental insurance is kind of a, a funky financial instrument, if you will. Right. It is. Right. Funky is a nice word. And but you're right, absolutely. I mean, because and that all drives from the from the idea that how much is it going to cost? Right, absolutely. Can I afford it? And and how much is going to hurt me? And 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 it's simple things. It's the soft skills. You know, people do business with people, especially with doctors, and and obviously we're in healthcare. Uh, first thing is first thing foremost, you've got to feel safe. You've called the right especially place, especially these days. Uh, obviously, yeah, absolutely more so in COVID environment than ever before. But but. All of us desire safety. Any place we are in, we're always looking for safety. And safety is a big, big uh, part of what we need to impart to a prospective patient that, yes, you're safe. We've called the right place. We care. We have empathy. We mm-hmm. can make this affordable. It can change your life. We have an appointment available. Yours is special. So those are some of the things that in, in the question, Right now, we're so busy, right? Most dental offices you've been to, the front is super busy. They're doing all sorts of things. Mm-hmm. They're checking out patients, they're doing insurance verifications, mm-hmm. and they're, they're, sometimes they're cleaning things. They're, they're doing all sorts of things. And, and sometimes what happens is in, in, that, in that busy environment, we forget to talk. We, we forget to have time for the most important function is talking to our customer, our client, our patient. And if we forget that, uh, no matter whether it's an existing patient or new patient, you know, people don't want to do business with you if you if you appear to be too busy and not caring about their concerns because people care what they care about, and you got to care about what the patients care about. Mm-hmm. Your stuff can wait, right? You got to do stuff. I understand. You got to do paperwork. You got to call the companies. All that stuff. That's great. But the most important person in that dental office is the patient, and we've got to respect that. Whether it's on the phone, whether it's in person whether it's anywhere else, because that is what drives revenue. It's a patient. Right. It's in my head. Like I have, I like analogies and then to use other things. It's like walking into Macy's or, or Nordstrom's and you're like, I'm trying to buy a suit and, uh, you know, I'd like to have help. But when I buy a suit, I, I like to wear nice stuff. Um, and then somebody's like, I'm too busy. I'm too busy folding the clothes over here. I right. can't help you. And I'm like, well, fine. I'll find somebody who can help me then, you know? It's That's a great the, analogy, actually. That, uh, I've had situations where we we had a we had a just two weeks ago we had a patient called one of our clients, and sometimes we get these crazy alerts because if things go crazy wrong, and patient called at four fifty five p.m. Florida time, Eastern time, and said, you know, uh, I've been thinking about this for a long time. I really need a full mouth extraction and get those implant supported dentures. Pretty penny, right? Thirty mm-hmm. thirty to fifty thousand dollars, depending on where you go to. Sure. And at at four fifty five, the the person at the front sounded in a hurried was very hurried. I'm like, Sir, um, we're about to close in five minutes. Could you call back tomorrow? So how do you do that? Like, how do you do that? And 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 I that call got elevated to my attention because, you know, when it's so egregious, right? You're literally telling a patient who could potentially spend $40,000 in your office, telling them that, could you call me tomorrow, right? Because it's 455. So that, that brings an alarm on your, on your phone? It, it does, brings an alarm on our side because it gets, we call it escalation call. Mm-hmm. Or, or somebody is really rude or racist or something like that. It, it escalates that, right? Because our AI listens to, because we don't think any, every human being needs to be treated with the utmost kindness and respect and compassion, regardless of how, what they sound like regardless of how much money you think they have or whatever that their circumstance might be. But this was uh, egregious because obviously $40,000 opportunity, 455, it's not even five, even if it was five. But it is almost like a drowning kid though, metaphorically, not, you know, not that serious, but this is where you go and save this drowning prospect, right? right? That's right. lost and it's about to wash away with the tide right. and you're going to go in there and pull it right out. And Correct. this makes patient prism the hero that patient prism is and we we got back we we sent that to the ceo of this group they called the patient the next morning 
offer them offer them a free set of um, a CT scan and a free whitening kit to just come in. And you know, I've had situations where we have recommended to to our DSO customers and, and dental customers that you know, if you have a case like that, I mean, send send an Uber, get them in, mm-hmm. get them in. You know, there's Uber corporate. You can as long as you can figure out the insurance stuff. We've got to figure out and, 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 and telling them that, that we're not, we're not, we're closed or call tomorrow. That's not acceptable. And we had to have a conversation with, with the receptionist. I'm like, I'm like, number one, your number one job in dentistry is to improve people's health. This procedure, yes, it would make us a lot of money, but at the end of the day, you've got to think about what that pa- patient has, has, has finally taken the, the step to call the dental office to get all their teeth removed and put nice shiny pearly whites in them. So not only they will have a great smile, but they will have great health. And you've got to remember that's a responsibility that we have in dentistry to, to improve not only people's oral health, but overall health. As we know that the connections obviously uh, establish very well now. Did you, did you listen to the show with Mark Cooper? The dental oh, Mark, business radio? Mark's amazing. Yeah. You know, I did, I did. It's, it's on my list to listen to. But the oral systemic connection is, is, is absolutely established. And, and so one of the things we educate as part of Patient Prism, and we're a software company and people think, oh my God, they just do AI and everything else. But at the end of the day, we're in the people business. We want to inspire our teams to be better. We want to inspire our teams in the front office to feel that they are making an impact on healthcare in America. We're changing the lives of people by getting them in the office. It's not about revenues. Revenues are a side effect of us treating people right. And, and, and so our values are going to create value in our organization. Mm-hmm. We're going to, we're going to, our values are what we, we care for patients. We know dentistry is going to change their life. We know dentistry, giving them the right teeth or whatever, fixing their stuff, a, a regular cleaning today. Um, there was a, a study done that I read that uh, periodontal cleaning, periodontal disease obviously has a direct impact, but it has a direct impact apparently on, 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 on uh, people who got sick with COVID, uh, there was uh, people with, with high amounts of periodontal disease um, had a higher chance of dying from COVID-19. Yeah, it's true. And, and, and so we are in the business of changing, saving lives. And I think that if once, once we get that into the minds of the team members, whether they're at the front or the middle or the back, it doesn't matter. And once they believe that they're calling, it's a calling. Dentistry is a calling. It's a business. Great. We're on business radio. That's great. At the end of the day. Right. You still have to have purpose. You know, one of the, I have to roll out of bed every day thinking I'm helping people. If I don't think I'm actually helping people, I'm going to go fishing. Correct. Correct. Or, you know, I'm going to, you know, do something else that I, I love to do. But I get up every morning at patient and, and think about why I'm here working like a maniac. And, and talking to people in dentistry because this is such a beautiful profession. Mm-hmm. It literally is, is, is changes people's lives in so many ways. And if we can make access to care, uh, but if, if we can improve access to care you know, using this AI technology by, by allowing more patients to book an appointment, mm-hmm. then we are getting more America healthier. We're getting more people to have this function and the aesthetics, right? It changes relationships too. More confidence. At least we're more aesthetically pleasing. Um, please don't tell me you're trying to bring smiles to the universe. Though. That's that's an insurance company. They already got the the trade. They already got that <laughs> slogan like trademarked. And then they told me that one time with a straight face. Really? And I was like, really? Smiles to the universe. Oh, you want to bring go smiles to the entire country? Is that what you're doing? Okay. Well, how about this? How about instead of dental insurance? Here's what we'll do. We'll have all the docs. They'll just, we'll work for free, right? They'll just go out there and they'll do all the work and they'll handle it and they'll bring smiles to the whole, whole country and the whole universe for free. All oh, right. Yes. And so guess what we don't need if that's the case? A financial vehicle. That's correct. <laughs> oh. Right. To pay for it. So we don't need insurance. And so then you don't have a job, buddy. Is that going to make you happy? That's not going to make you smile, is it? True well, story. It's, you know, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, that 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 comment sounds like one of those social media memes. They sound interesting. They sound funny, but they're so simplistic. They don't reflect reality. It sounds funny. You laugh oh, at yeah. them, right? Oh yeah. oh yeah. You must never. You've never worked at in an insurance company before. 
<laughs> yeah, I am not. I am not. I am not. <laughs> yeah, the marketing department's very creative. They come up with all kinds of stuff. And I'm like, listen, guys, you can, you can call it Apple a bicycle all day long, but it's still Apple. You know, um, you know, with all due respect to you guys, I know you have to get creative with the uh, products that are not so creative. Um, but anyway, I digress into the insurance, but I trust me, I bet you somebody has the copyright on we're bringing smiles to the universe. Bring, bring smiles to the universe, right? Uh, if not trademark, baby, man, we're, we're bringing <laughs> smiles to Baby Yoda over there. On, 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 on. Uh, I don't know what island he's on right now. Tatooine. I don't know. I'm not sure what what planet he's on. But, but, uh, Mandalorian, Star Wars. I haven't Vanilla started that yet. Mandalorian's good. Yes, you got to watch both. It's, so, are you Star Trek or Star Wars guy? I'm a Star Wars guy. All right, so, uh, okay. Star Wars guy. But Mandalorian is, is right. Uh, great. My son, who's 10, got me into it. My son's 10. And um, I've learned a lot about all the different uh, galaxies and systems. And It seems like it's gotten a lot more complicated than the first three. Yeah, it's 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 absolutely yeah, the, the, the side stories are interesting. In this, in this where, where this is right in between um, the when, when Yoda is dead and, and you know, it's right in between before the other episodes that come about. But anyway, yeah, that's, we, that's we the, didn't, my son's in Florida where it's warm. Um, Mandalorian is, is excellent. I, and, but, but they're bringing smiles to list. the smiles. So Mandalorian, they're not bringing smiles to the universe, but they're just Amal more, and Patient Prism are right. bringing smiles to the universe. So um, if you don't, um, I'm not going to mention any names. I really, I know you guys are listening to the show, so you know who you are. Uh, hugs and kisses. So, uh, now artificial intelligence, my wife says I have artificial intelligence cause I think I'm smart, but I'm not. That's what she says. So, but AI is a real thing that it's patient really- prism is, is moving. Now, how easy is it to plug this thing? Now, the first time I met you, by the way, when I, when you were telling me about this, I'm like, I've never heard of that. That sounds right. pretty awesome. Well, that sounds like it's going to be hard to do, right? You got to do a bunch of stuff and plug in computers and, you know, walk me through the process. It's a simple thing. Let's the the process is you're a patient. You're driving on I eighty five. No, no, I'm a doc. Let's say I'm a doc, okay, and I'm yeah. a, and I'm like, oh, right, that sounds interesting. Okay. Um. All right, go. Right. Put that stuff in my my system. Right. So the process is simple. We 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 insert ourselves directly in your phone system, so that we are monitoring your phone calls. We record the phone calls, and and. Once we and so the, so what what the AI does it really understands who this person is. Is this a new patient? Is it does. And so like if John Ray over here calls, it's going to be like John Ray, North Fulton, yeah. North Fulton, and uh, and John. And it's going to say everything about John. It's going to have his like age, his background. No, not really. The it's, fact it's that, not he, that he, he likes purple Corvettes. It's not that creepy. But John Ray, if if John Ray calls and says. Um, you know, I've been thinking about, um, you know, getting some veneers and um, I've not been to a dentist in a long time. Uh, do you guys do veneers? And, and, and they said, yes, we do the veneers and stuff. So the computer, the AI will actually listen to a transcript of John Ray's recording and says, you know, I think John Ray, the probability of him being a new patient in this office is about 95% because John Ray said, that you know, I'm looking to get some veneers. He didn't say I'm a brand new patient. So what AI does really is it looks at uh, it, it. It takes the audio conversation, transcribes it into text, and it looks at patterns in text, not just in John Ray's conversation, but it looks at millions of patterns and puts them together to understand first who John Ray is. Now, if John Ray worked for Henry Schein and says, "Hey, when can I deliver the cotton gauze or cotton balls?" Uh, the AI is going to say, you know what, John Ray it looks like this is just a general call. This is not a patient. Mm-hmm. And, and, and and to be able to figure that out quickly, AI can do because it recognizes patterns. Mm-hmm. And it takes data, in, unstructured data, makes it structured data, and analyzes it. So first step is figuring out who John Ray is. And now we've determined he's a new patient. Now the conversation goes on and everything else. And if John Ray is at the end of the conversation, I'm going to think about it. I'll call you guys back. Based on those patterns, the AI has figured out that John Ray did not book that appointment. Mm. Now we have identified very quickly within 10 minutes of him hanging up the phone. We've identified that John Ray 
who wanted some veneers worth $5,000 has decided not to schedule an appointment. And here's what happened. So that, that, that piece, AI sends it back to our Tampa call center, which they look, they confirm we're human in the loop AI, which means the humans are there to, and then that information gets curated. Our human being sitting in Tampa says, okay, let's put some of the things in, 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 in perspective of all the things that didn't happen in that conversation. And mm-hmm. that information is, is packaged in a bow that, hey, maybe our receptionist did not give John Ray financing options to credit credit that could have made it cheaper for him. And they didn't discuss that. And all that information goes to somebody's text, uh, phone and email within 25, 20, 25 minutes. Say that we just lost John Ray worth $5,000 within years or $10,000 within years. And let's hear some training videos around it. Here's how you talk when somebody calls and, and thinks it's very expensive. And when, when uh, somebody is really price shopping and mm-hmm. say he was price shopping. So AI has figured out that John Ray was a price shopper and he, he was concerned about cost. And there's a training video around that. So all that goes back to the office. You look at it. I'm like, okay, well, I should call John Ray back. Now the doctor's office manager says, all right, well, let's, let's do this. Uh, we've understood patient prism has told us we've lost a $9,000 opportunity with John Ray. Let's call him back and tell him that John Ray, what, you know, you called us earlier, but we forgot to give you some important information. One that we have an appointment available to see you tomorrow or day after we've got really creative financing, financing available that can make this into like in a couple hundred dollars a month. You got to get creative with his finances. That's for okay. sure. And, and, um, exactly. And, um, and why don't you come in? We'll, uh, we would love new patients and, you know, we want to make sure that we're treating this correctly and we want you to get the smile you deserve because our, our doctor is amazing at, at, at smile makeovers. At veneers, right? Smile makeovers. He is the Picasso of veneers. And so if you want a veneer, you need to get in here. Correct. Correct. And, and John Ray's like, you know what? I'm, I am really, Pleasantly surprised that a healthcare practitioner provider calls in cares enough to call me back. And then he's like, all right, I'm going to come in. Mm-hmm. And and that's the process, right? That's it. That's what I love about this. And I, you know, for the first time you explained it because this is dental business radio, right? I'm a numbers guy. You're a numbers guy. I'm a numbers guy. I like numbers guys and girls. I like numbers people, data people, um, because I'm always like, all right, well, how do you quantify that? How do you like, what does that mean and how much money? And so this seems like it's very easy for you to go to a client, uh, independent, like any client and go, um, here's what we just did. We, we just found you these, what? 10, I don't know, 20 different opportunities that, and then they can easily run a report and they go, well, that, that's a hundred thousand dollars a year. Correct. Right. At the minimum, at the minimum. So this is why you're very popular. We're, we're popular because we care. I think, uh, we, we really, we really believe that. Well, you that, can care all day, but if you don't make me money. Correct. Correct. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, and that, that you don't have to wait. That's the, another reason, right? You don't have to wait to find out within 30 days, you're going to find out. Man, we saved two patients or three patients, and those patients ended up spending twenty grand with us, right? Mm-hmm. Directly as a result of what Patient Prism did. Mm-hmm. If we had not found out this patient missed, and John Ray called, and he's he needed nine thousand dollar veneers, we had not known by the time if we had deployed. Imagine deploying. Imagine we had a call recording service, and we had deployed people to listen to calls. Number one, who's got the time? Number two. How do you figure out which calls to listen to? Let's say you figured this out. It would take you hours and hours and hours of listening to find out that, man, by that time, John Ray has already, his, his nimble fingers on the keyboard have already found five other doctors that he can call upon. So he's already gone. The prospect is gone to some of one of your competitors who is going to basically treat them. You're right. To roll out the red carpet. Correct. You're right. And, and that's what we want to prevent, right? We want to prevent, we want you, you've driven that lead in. We want to make sure that that prospect, that patient comes into your office and spends money with you guys and you get to impact his health. Right. And you get to make, you want to welcome them. You want to make them feel warm and you want to give them the path of least resistance, um, into the treatment that they are looking for and need. Correct. Right. Absolutely. That's pretty easy. Um, the other cool thing about the, platform is the education component correct the education component 
in which, you know, as somebody who's talked to, I don't know, thousands of different uh, owner doctors across this country, uh, they don't have the time and they certainly don't have, they've never trained, you know, on a high level, like, Nordstrom training on how to answer calls appropriately. Maybe they, t- they took a weekend course or something, but maybe you know how to do it even. Maybe you know how to do it, but how are you going to train it? Right. I know how to do a lot of stuff, but you know, training, like, do I have time to train? I Me mean, personally. The answer is no. It's tough, right? right? It's tough. And so the cool thing about it is that you have this whole library of things that then pinpoint and go, you need to do X. And then it's like a, what, what's the average video? It's a minute, two minutes long. Right. It's quick. quick. Right. Hey, boom, here you go. And so it's on the spot training. And so it's like having your whole tra- uh, a training team. And it's, but that's how I got my, I started in my career in operations management. I've trained a lot of people in my time. It's hard. It is very hard. And you know what? It's sometimes we've seen people learn better in chunks. Right? You tell somebody who calls in, and let's take an insurance example and they're calling. It's like, I'm, well, we don't take Blue Cross. Well, you're out of network. Um, how, what kind of conversation you need to have with the patient who's out of network? We've got a video on that. Mm-hmm. And, um, what, what happens to a patient who's complete a price shopper? We have a video on that. What happens to somebody who's anxious, afraid? Somebody who is, um, really wanting all the details. Somebody who, who wants, um, all the information about how what dental implants are like. And there's all sorts of videos, right? Uh, that we have almost 350 of them that relate to what what questions patients may have on the phone that you can answer. And those are a minute, two minutes long, recorded by some of the industry experts in the industry that mm-hmm. we know of. And then they get attached specifically to every problem that occurs. So if a patient calls and, and, and doesn't schedule an appointment because price shopping, he was a price shopper, that alert that goes out will have the price shopper video right there, Mm -hmm. which is beautiful, right? Because now you've not only told these guys what they did wrong, you've given them the tools to listen to that video before they call the patient back. Sure. And that's powerful. Absolutely. Now now you do that enough times over a period of 42 days that Charles Duhigg wrote the book, The Power of Habit, right? Now what we're we're doing is we're changing habits one call at a time. Mm -hmm. And, And when you encounter these things and when you're nudged in the right direction, we're not big brother watching here, right? We're not big brother watching. What we call ourselves are we're coaches, right? Uh, front office is a position, right? Back hygienist is a position. Doctor is a position. Doctor, let's say the quarterback, right? Mm-hmm. But, but every, there's a position that if you have the sports analogy, front office is a position. Every position has a coach, right? We are the front office coach. We want to make sure that we are going to facilitate your greatness by allowing you to understand the things that you're doing that could make the patient experience better or, or the things that you're doing that are making the patient experience worse. And we're optimizing that journey for you. I love that, actually. So the front office coach. It is a front office coach. And as that they are the face of the franchise, so to speak, Correct. Correct. That's, uh, it's pretty important. But um, I think that going back to our elevator thing, that's what you guys do. You're the front office coach, you know, if you're, if it's a dental conference radio, right? Or, or well, we are accelerating that, that your right. new patient acquisition, right? We're accelerating your new patient growth. It's important, right? It's important. We're accelerating your new patient growth without spending more money on marketing. It's not about spending more money. It's about really understanding, making sure that everybody who calls gets scheduled. Now, For, after that happens, sorry. Yeah, you're preserving your marketing investment. Absolutely. We're reducing your cost of customer acquisition, your cost of customer acquisition, we're reducing that. And, 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 and obviously you're, you're providing by, by, by providing exceptional customer service on the phone. You know what happens, Patrick, it translates into the entire journey of the patient. If you feel good about somebody, when you go in, you, you're going to, and that, 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 that optimal Ritz Carlton experience continues. Mm-hmm. Throughout the process, the front office gives you coffee like John Ray offered me today. And then, then, you know, the hygienist comes in, the assistant comes in and, 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 and everybody's delivering this exceptional care and compassionate service through communication that eventually leads to higher case acceptance rates, right? And then leads to higher referrals. 
That's what we want in dentistry to happen. We want that entire customer journey from the time they find you, when they have the need, they find you, they Google you, they find you on Google Maps, ads, whatever it is. The entire experience, we want to map that and make sure that every handoff that happens, every time a patient encounters your website or your people, the communication is so optimal that they feel that this is the right place. This is where I want to get my treat, treatment done. This is who I want to refer my friends and family to. Mm-hmm. And we are just one of the pe- one of the pieces, mm-hmm. w- which is on the phone, which is the first interaction with the doctor's office is the phone. Sure. And some people do it through chat and everything else, but, but on the phone. And if you can make them feel welcome, if you can make them feel safe, if you can empathize with them, you can alleviate this, their concerns about cost and fear they are going to come in sure. and, and you're going to, and obviously you're going to do obviously. So it's, them. it's, it's kind of a no brainer to me. So, you know, it, just frankly, I'm puzzled when people would say, why would somebody not do this? Well, for a variety of reasons. And I'll tell you, I'm, I'm very open and candid about our failures as much as our successes. And uh, I, I like candor. And who does it fail with? Uh, if you've got a small office that just doesn't receive any phone calls from new patients, it's not going to work for you because you ain't got nothing to analyze. Uh, <laughs> number two, uh, if you have a reluctant team that, son, son, I've been doing dentistry since you're wearing diapers. I don't need any training. Well, if you've got those kind of people, well, that's not going to work for them. But, but now more and more so, um, if you are a growth-minded dentist, was actively looking for new patients, advertising, marketing through social, whatever means you're doing, digital, mm-hmm. non-digital, you're driving leads in, it's going to work for you. Or unless you have like Dale Carnegie's at your front office that know exactly how to say everything perfectly, they never have a bad day. And they, every time they're booking hundred percent, I haven't seen yet, right? There are people who are great. So it, it does work for those type of practices. All right. I don't know if you remember what I told you the first time you told me about this. I was like, um, can I get that from my company? Yeah, like, I, why, I wish why, I, we could. Why would, why would I, why would I not do that? That doesn't make any sense because even, even me, even myself, right? I'm, I guess I'm the face of the franchise. I don't know. I certainly talked to a lot of people, uh, but yeah, you know, could I use coaching to, you know, probably, you know, it's, it's, I, my staff certainly won't tell me anything. John Ray is over there chuckling. And what are you chuckling about? Chucklehead? <laughs> we, you know, the, the, the new industry in Silicon Valley today is sales enablement and sales enablement is, are we having the right conversation with our customers? Right. And there's lots of companies out there in other verticals that look at conversational intelligence is what we're talking about, right? Conversational right. intelligence. At the end of the day, people don't care about what you're selling. All right. People don't yeah. care about how you're selling it. People care about why you're doing what you're doing, as Simon Sinek says. People also, people will buy stuff from you as long as they can trust you. And trust can be only established with optimal communication. Right. You have to build rapport and you have to do so in a very short amount of time. Very short amount of time. You have like, you know, uh, Google on on the website front, Google says you've got what, uh, eight seconds to sometimes 12 seconds to impress somebody to make the next step, which is call you. And on the phone, a patient can tell if you're having a bad day. Mm-hmm. You answer the I phone. Bet you can, yeah. The patient can tell if you have if if you if you don't care. And one of the things you know, uh, a lot of these coaches advice like keep a mirror in front of you when you're talking on the phone oh, yeah. and make sure you're smiling. Yeah, because somebody can tell you're smiling. This yeah. is true, I actually. I I this is this is not just dentistry. This is corporate America, you know. <laughs> I've, the, I tell my staff that and they're like, why are you so corny? Yeah, and I'm like, look, I'm telling you, you can say, listen, you're an effing a-hole as long as you're smiling, you know, then people are like, ah, people want to, <laughs> we have, a, you know, as human beings, we have an inherent tendency to relate and you've got to be able to relate to the patient, relate to the patient means you are putting yourself in their shoes. That's the beautiful word in the English language, empathy, right? You're putting yourself in their shoes and asking about, you know, hey, did you watch the Super Bowl? I mean, if you're in Tampa. I did watch the Super Bowl. And the Tampa Tampa won. And you know what? Tampa, where your call center is, where they are doing the curating, 
Tampa, I've heard, is a title town, the championship city. Shout out we to everybody champ. in Tampa. That is correct. Woo-hoo. I mean, I mean, it, it's been a wonderful year, um, a wonderful season, football, baseball, hockey, and even the soccer. They went to the finals, uh, the Rowdies. So uh, go Tampa Bay. That's right. Recognize. I might have to go down there. It's a lot warmer right now. Um, but I, I, I couldn't walk out of this episode without giving a shout out there. Um, now, going back. Sir. Maybe I need more empathy. Maybe I need an empathy coach because as you're describing this and I'm like, well, if we have this filter, right, if we're understanding this is a John Ray's a price shopper and if we're understanding that John Ray maybe uh, has, he's he's very fearful, he's an anxious guy, he doesn't want, he's not comfortable with people putting fingers in his mouth or John Ray it wants to follow his insurance. We have all of this stuff. Is there something that can tell us that John Ray is an a-hole and we don't want him in our office? Well, uh, in our view, every customer, regardless of their a-holes, you, you cannot book every single one of them. But 90% of people, 95% of people, you can absolutely, even if they're a-holes, it's not because it's, it's something going on in their life that, that, that's making them be that way. Yeah. I mean, you can absolutely get John Ray to calm down a little bit. By talking about what's important to John Ray. I just slapped the bejesus out of him. That's what I do. Well, well, it's un- it, you cannot do that over the phone. <laughs> and you cannot g- do that over the phone. But, um, but, but, but you can. I mean, the thing is, there is situations where we have uh, seen that very angry patients. We've seen very uh, – the c- discourses that are really, really um, provocative. And you want to – we want to make sure that at the end of the day, we are – a dental office, we're a healthcare provider. We are doing everything in our power to make that patient feel welcome. If they disrespect, disrespect us, obviously it's, it's, it's on them, it's not on us. But, but, but tell you the truth, you know, I, I'm only half kidding here, by the way. No, I know you yeah, are. Yeah. I know you are. <laughs> because the thing is, is that in my business is a little bit different, but, um, I would, I don't, there, if you're going to be difficult, and challenging for me to deal with. And if I think you're rude to me, and I, and I think I'm fairly polite, you know, I'm a nice guy um, most of the time. Yep. And then I know you're going to be rude to my staff. Correct. Right. And that's not something I'm going to tolerate. Right. Um, and so I'm half kidding. Um, but because you probably don't have something on there because that's really not what it's geared to do. Um, and then internally, like everybody has their own a-hole filter where they're like, yeah, we don't, we don't need that person in our, in our office. Very likely. Absolutely not. I mean, I'm, but you know what? For the most part, people are nice. For the most part, people just are anxious in, in our job. Our job is to make sure that, that if you are, uh, our job is to make sure that the patient who calls in is able to just come in come into the office and see the beautiful staff and the hygienist and the assistants and the doctor and get the treatment they deserve. That's it. We're not trying to be anybody else. Right. No, I get it. Why does speed matter? Yeah. Ricky Bobby. Speed matters because if imagine, imagine knowing in real time what you did wrong and to be able to fix it. Right. It's like having the ability and, and, and the quicker, you know, what you did wrong. And nobody wants to suck at anything. Right? Nobody I, wants to suck I, at their I job. I agree with that. Right. And imagine like you had a coach, like imagine like a, uh, some guy hovering over your head and uh, watching everything you do and, and, and kind of letting you know quickly that, Hey, uh, Patrick, that little proposal that you gave earlier, that presentation, I think you forgot to mention like two or three things that could have really sealed the deal. And knowing that in 15 minutes before you've even left that, building going back to the customer and saying, by the way, I did forget to mention three other things that make me better than everybody else on the planet in the world of dental insurance. I forgot to give you about this. We've got special deal with this and we can negotiate this. Imagine having that. Imagine you could, how many deals could you close if you knew immediately. Now you could know, and, and somebody was actually looking at the stuff and figuring out what the best practices are. So speed matters because now you have a second chance to make a first impression. You have a second chance. AI is giving you a second chance to revisit the customer, fix your mistakes, and try to get the deal back before it's dead. 
before somebody else gets it who is less competent than you are. And, and you know what? You are one of the best uh, and maybe the best in this business. So that's what it is. Speed matters because it allows us to fix what we just broke. That's critical. And do it again. And that's what AI allows us to do. That's why patient prism is the most innovative and, and, and powerful tool in dentistry because the speed at which we get the information in an accurate way to the dental office to be able to fix that problem that occurred 20 minutes ago, 25 minutes ago, allows us to bring back that customer and revive somebody that was almost dead lead. They've already gone. And 25% of those people come back because of speed. There's all my, all my competitors, I love them, would never say anything bad about any of them, but, but they haven't approached this as a sales problem. They've approached this as a marketing attribution problem. They just want to attribute, oh, where did the customer come from? And let's record the calls. But at the end of the day, we have to know quickly why that patient didn't move forward. And if we can know it and say, my God, we forgot to offer them uh, the, the, the financing option or we, we didn't offer them the discount plan that we have. And just quickly knowing that, I mean, yes, we should have offered that. And, and that allows us to really, really optimize Everything that we're doing, that's why speed matters. Speed matters. And, and the only thing, because in, in the, if AI didn't exist, the way you would do this is you would have a group of people listening to all these phone calls take forever. And they'd have to become subject matter experts and Correct. then they would have to do training sessions at least once a week yeah. over and over and over and over again. Um, with these folks, but by yeah. the time they get to it, they have listened to the calls. <clears throat> it's too late. Right. The guy, you know, the John Ray is in John, his purple Corvette getting veneers and, and, and got a speeding ticket Mexico. already. He's got a gotten speeding ticket. He's already driven past and he's driven. He's gone to San Diego and he's gone into Baja and then he's, he's gotten and he's getting the veneers right there on the corner, right on on the corner street right there. Right. Yes. He, he just puts the top down or maybe puts it's the T-top. Mm-hmm. Um, so I like that. I think that it's one of the coolest things I've heard about, and you know, I, you know, I get around, I know you get around too. You you get around more than I do actually. Um, and I admire that about you and you're a numbers guy and you're genuine. And so, you know, I think people should use speed and call you guys up and, you know, access or patient present, assuming that you are open to having your front office get new patients. So if somebody who's listening to the show wanted to get a hold of Patient Prism and ask some questions, I'm sure that your front office yes. is warm and welcoming and will guide them along the path that they need should this solution be in their interest. How would our listeners do that? Well, all they would have to do is visit our website, www.patientprism.com. Um, go there, uh, schedule a demo. There's an orange button in the top right-hand corner. It says schedule a demo and somebody will call you, they'll give you a demo and they will, the one thing that I can guarantee you that they will do for you is they will do an honest assessment whether you actually need us or not. Mm-hmm. If you don't need us, we will tell you that maybe you need to fix something else. For example, it's like, oh, I get only four, three new patients a month. Well, patient prison is not the right solution for you. And we will be honest enough. One of the things I talk about is people before profits. I mean, you've seen my shirts everywhere. You've yeah, seen that's, my hashtags. that's why I like you. We do believe that we're not going to force the solution down your throat, but we can help most dental practices. Uh, contact us, follow us on Facebook, LinkedIn, follow us on YouTube. We have lots of amazing content we've created with some of the best minds in dentistry. And uh, schedule the demo. Uh, find out uh, from our, our sales team. We'll, we'll connect with you schedule a demo and, 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 and diagnose, do you really need this? If you need it, then we can uh, get you in and, and, and give you really immediate results within the first 30 days, sometimes within the first day. We've had a, uh, we had a pediatric group last week, uh, came on board, first day on Patient Prism, booked a family of four. First day, we recovered four patients, day number one. It feels one. good, doesn't it? It feels amazing. Amazing. And that guy sent us a video testimony. I'm like, oh my God, I, I got patient prism started Monday. A family of four called. They couldn't book in the first time. We got the reload alert. We call it reloads, re-engaged lost opportunity alerts. We got the alert from patient prism. We called them back and got the whole family booked. That's awesome. And that was beautiful. Mm-hmm. And we have these stories, Patrick, every single day of the week. Every single day we found out, they, oh, this practice got 
this patient back. This, this practice got this all on four case back. This practice got a whole family coming into the office because what we did. And it's tremendously fulfilling to know that we're adding patients to all the, our clients' offices, new patients every single day by just letting people, by, by training people on how to become better communicators. And AI is helping us in that process. That's awesome. That's fantastic. Amal, I want to thank you for being on the show. It's always a pleasure to see you. I'm Absolutely. glad you came up here. We are broadcasting live out of Atlanta, more specifically innovation in downtown Woodstock, where all the cool kids are, with the producer, the unofficial mayor of North Fulton, John Ray, who I'd also like to thank. And I want to give a special thank you to the show sponsor, Practice Quotient, PBO Analysis and Negotiation. It's a top-tier compensation, top-tier representation for top-tier providers. And so if you are a top tier provider and are not being compensated as such, uh, you may want to speak with Practice Quotient and you can reach them at www.practicequotient.com. Not to be confused with Patient Prism. It's Patient Prism and Practice Quotient is not Practice Prism and Patient Quotient. That's correct. Right. That would be wrong. That is correct. Practice Quotient. You know, P. Everybody calls it PQ. I thought the name was very clever. My wife thinks it's s- silly, and but whatever. I like the name a lot. You've been you're doing great work in this business. Uh, you're super analytical, and you know it's pe- people are leaving money on the table, and just like we are in the business of of like, oh my god, don't leave all this money on the table. Mm. And you're doing the same exact thing. Yeah, I'm, I'm, the table. I have to say I'm a little jealous though because yours turns it. You're able to do it in 30 days. Ours takes a little longer. Um, so, but thank you to Practice Quotient and all the people at Practice Quotient who makes the organization um, as stellar as it is. Um, so, from Florida all the way to Georgia, uh, thanks to Practice Quotient. Thank you to them all. Thank you to John Ray. And thank you to you, dear listener. If you like the show, please be sure to give it a five-star rating and thumbs up, a nice Google review, um, all of that stuff. I promise you, good karma will come from it. All right? That's a guarantee from your friend and host, Patrick O'Rourke. Until next time.